Natalie Gray reports. This is 31 Squadron showing just how quickly they can get a tornado in the air. They're off to Afghanistan in October and going with them is 30-year-old Jules Fleming from Bury St Edmunds. She's one of two female pilots who fly with this squadron. It might sound like a job for the boys, but Jules, who's married to a tornado pilot in a different squadron here, is not in the least bit phased about going to war. To help them out on the ground, that, that's my job. That, that's what I'm there for. Does being a woman help you or hinder you in any way? Neither. Uh, you are one of the guys. Um, as long as you are professional and you, you, you know your stuff, you can do your job, it, it, it's, not, it's not a factor. If you said, is it right to send women into a war zone? Well, all, all the services do that, and I think it's, uh, it's UK policy. And I think um, uh, it is something we're proud of because we, we don't discriminate men or women in, in whatever jobs we do. So, um, yeah, absolutely, it is right. As the conflict in Afghanistan has intensified, Britain has seen an ever-rising toll of the dead and injured coming home. 217 British Forces personnel have died since the conflict began. Over 30 from our region. These are nervous times. Corporal John Fuller is dreading leaving behind his fiancée Fiona. Obviously, I'm going to miss her very much. Uh, three months away over that sort of time of the year is not uh, ideal, but um, she's fully understanding in what I do day to day, and uh, she'll be looking forward to seeing her in the new year. And is she going to crack on with the wedding preparations? I hope so. She's definitely more qualified than I am for it. Chief Technician David Andrews will celebrate his 50th birthday in Afghanistan. That's quite unique because it'll be alcohol free, which should make change from the last 30 years. <laughs> So I'll celebrate it when I, when I get back. The most significant current deployment to Afghanistan from units in our region are from the Light Dragoons based at Swanton Morley in Norfolk, the Army Air Corps based at Watersham in Suffolk, the 27 Squadron RAF Regiment from Honington in Suffolk and the 49 Squadron Engineer Regiment based at Winbish in Essex. They'll be joined by RAF Tornadoes in early October. Baroness Ann Taylor, the Minister for International Defence and Security, watched 31 Squadron prepare for battle. I have been congratulating them on their professionalism, the way they have prepared for this operation, and indeed the confidence that they have, both in their uh, planes and in all the new equipment that has been put on them in order to equip them for this mission. The boys and girls of 31 Squadron have an unenviable task in front of them, but they say they're more than prepared. Natalie Gray, Anglian News, RAF Marham. Well, it's 13 minutes past six. Do stay with us here on Anglia tonight. Here's what's still to come this Wednesday evening. A record number of rescues. How the lifeboat crews around our coast had their busiest summer ever. Perfect timing why little Zach's arrival surprised hospital staff, but delighted his big sisters. And like here at Newport Pagnell in Buckinghamshire, there was quite a lot of cloud cover in the region today, and we didn't get to see as much sun as we'd hoped for, but it will be shining. More news now from where you live. Investigators at Felixstowe, who are sifting through a shipment of alleged illegal waste sent back from Brazil, say they found meat, nappies and old underwear. More than 80 containers of waste were returned because the Brazilian authorities said they contained contaminated material. Environmental crime investigators have now opened 14 of the containers and have begun to sift through their contents. A popular market trader has been remembered by colleagues after she died in a car crash. Susan Viner worked at the tea stall in Norwich Market for over 20 years. Friends and family have left flowers at her stall today. She died on Saturday afternoon after her car crashed on the A134 near Thetford. Big smile, always done, done up, had her makeup on and her hair done and just full of life, always full of life. Not just on here, everywhere she went. She loved to party. She was a people person. Her Royal Highness Princess Anne was in Lowestoft today to visit a new fire station and the Royal Norfolk and Suffolk Yacht Club. She was there to mark the club's 150th anniversary, but also got to see a few more modern craft as well. Martin Stew went along. Ship shape and security swept, the Royal Norfolk and Suffolk Yacht Club has been waiting a long time to welcome royalty. And following a trip to see a new fire station opened in Pakefield, at just after midday, Her Royal Highness Princess Anne arrived to a warm welcome. 
The club is celebrating its 150th anniversary and the members, as well as the public, were delighted the Princess Royal could join their celebrations. Obviously, she's being her involvement with the RYA, she was, you know, very au fait with boats and the construction of boats. So, yes, yeah, she was very interested, and, and interested in, in the hull design of the Honda powerboat, which I, was, I thought was quite amazing. Paul Berkshire and David Cowley are the crew of that boat. They were recently crowned Formula 4 offshore champions after picking up enough points at the final race meet in Lowestoft. Their 225 engine powering them to victory at speeds in excess of 70 miles an hour. Really surprised at her knowledge on powerboats. Uh, she was very interested in everything uh, you know we've done this year, and you know congratulated us on our success. But just her knowledge of the whole offshore powerboating scene was just fantastic. After the tour of the marina, the club's members presented the Princess Royal with a cheque for the sailability charity she's patron of. <laughs> sailability gives disabled people the chance to get out on the water using specially designed boats. They're great we go in, on the boats. I go on my own. Most of us do now. And it's just absolutely brilliant. In fact, you're totally equal to anyone who can walk, you know. The Princess's final duty, to unveil commemorative doors to mark the club's special anniversary. A lasting reminder of an historic visit. Martin Stew, Anglia News, Lowestoft. Looked like a terrific day. Now, anyone with young children will know what a miserable experience shopping for shoes can be. Oh, yes. <laughs> but a new system which allows parents to accurately measure their feet and then buy shoes online could be about to hit the market. Designed by researchers at the University of East Anglia, it was just one of the new products exhibited at the Cambridge Enterprise Conference. Matthew Hudson was there. Accurately measuring children's feet at home so you can buy the right size shoes online. Yes, those nightmare trips to the shoe shop could soon be a thing of the past, thanks to researchers at the University of East Anglia. All you need is a PC, digital camera to take three pictures, and a printer, and you can do it all at home. We tried it out in a controlled environment, found that it was giving us accurate readings, um, as accurate as the expert fitters, and so we were comfortable with that. Just one of more than a dozen bright ideas showcased in the annual Cambridge Enterprise Conference at Churchill College. Could this be the face of the next generation of computer games? Emotion AI, developed in Cambridge, allows gamers to give characters a range of personality attributes, making them more lifelike, their behaviour changing automatically as the game unfolds. Play the game once, then change your character's personality so it reacts differently next time around. It's also great news for games manufacturers. One of the main problems with the industry right now is they're really struggling with profitability because the cost of creating content for characters is tremendous. Our technology basically automates that process of creating content, so we've reduced the cost by a factor of 100 or 1,000. Elsewhere, the world's strongest magnet, which could help create small mobile MRI scanners and high-tech home security systems which spray would-be burglars with a unique DNA trace. Or how about this? Low-cost interactive printable electronics. It's already being used to create children's audio books with multiple different endings, and greetings cards may never be the same. We've done a, um, a greetings card where when you touch it, the candles light up, you can blow the candles out, not all the candles go out because that's what happens in life, so you have to blow them out again and then so it's, it's about creating an experience. Some of these may well become household names and we'll all wonder how we ever coped without them. Matthew Hudson, Anglian News, Cambridge.